But it's hard to believe it's almost a year now since the war in Ukraine began, since Russia invaded. It's impossible to know the true number of casualties, but it's estimated that well over 200,000 people have died. This brave country has been through hell and it's keeping on going. Australia has, of course, played its part with financial and military assistance. And 70 of our diggers are currently in the south of England training Ukrainian soldiers. Our Foreign Minister Penny Wong and Defence Minister Richard Miles have visited the training site in the last couple of days. Here's the Defence Minister speaking earlier. Uh, the people that we're seeing who are being trained uh, have come from normal jobs throughout their country, uh, have volunteered in order to defend their country. And what they face is intense danger when they go home. And the training that Australians are providing are going to help make them safer. It will save lives and it will make an incredible contribution. Well, let's go to Kiev and speak again to Ukrainian citizen, parliamentarian and mother, Helena Yanchenko, whose bravery we've admired now for almost a year. Helena, I'll never forget the first time I crossed to you with Kiev uh, under siege uh, and under attack, uh, and you said you'd never flee. And we wondered then whether we'd ever see you again. Just how weary are you now? How fearful are you almost one year on? Uh, well, I'm in Kiev, so I'm passing you my highs from Kiev. Uh, the situation in Ukraine is still quite intense, and uh, there are strikes, airstrikes, pretty much on a, a daily basis. And uh, it's important to say that Russians are fighting not Ukrainian militaries, but they are basically terrorizing Ukrainian citizens, just innocent people. Uh, common families, they are striking electricity objects in order to uh, pretty much uh, make people suffer. Currently in Kiev, on a daily basis, we don't have lights, heating, sometimes water for half a day. And this is what was caused by Russian airstrikes, by that terrorism. So that is why we uh, still encourage, we are asking our international friends, our international allies, inclu including Australia, to increase the, the volume of military assistance that you are providing to Ukraine. We are very thankful for, for the um, armored vehicles uh, provided by Australia by, uh, by a few howitzers, M777, that were provided. It all um uh, makes our absolutely brave military stronger but we definitely need more and that is why i would like to actually address all australian citizens and ask them to to address uh, your politicians in order to increase the number of artillery and number of howitzers that australia has we will we'll follow uh, that we'll follow that up Ukraine. elena as i mentioned we're, we're training your soldiers in the uk at the moment you've now got germany and the US sending tanks, which are going to be very useful. You talk about the horrors of the Ukrainian winter with Russia trying to knock out power supplies and water supplies. Uh, do we read from that, that that in the autumn you'll be looking to mount an offensive with these new weapons and try and expel Russia completely from your territory? Uh, well, I would like to remind that actually we had very great uh, dynamic on the front line in September and October last uh, last yeah, year. Absolutely. We've been able to liberate uh, majority of two regions, which is Kharkiv region and Kherson. And I should uh, tell you that people were crying. When they were liberating, Ukrainians were crying because they spent eight or nine months in occupation and they were happy that they are finally liberated. But those miracles on the front line were possible because we received a number of new heavy weapons from NATO allies, from Western allies, and that uh, helped us to make this breakthrough on the front line and liberate those poor Ukrainian civilians who lived in occupation for more than half a year. And that's why this 
new breakthroughs are possible if uh, we receive more heavy weapon and Australia can help us with howitzers and artillery. And of course, we are very thankful for, for trainings and also for uh, this new project, uh, joint project of Australia and France on producing um, are, uh, on, on producing basically ammunition for Ukraine. This is very yeah. important, but we'll it's keep very on that. important to understand that the amount of, uh, of uh, military assistance should be increased. Helena, Helena, we got that message loud and clear. Yeah. I wonder if I could just ask you a personal question about how you're putting up with this as a family. You, you had children with you in Kiev. Are they still with you? Or have you, you sent them to safety? Tell, tell me about the worries of being a parent in this situation. Um, this is a horrible story and, and my heart is breaking when I'm talking about my family story because my husband currently joined Ukrainian uh, army and my children live in Europe in a status of refugee. And this is the story that happens to millions of Ukrainian families. Millions of Ukrainian families are pretty much uh, broken apart. Uh, a lot of women with their children live in Europe, a lot of men joined uh, army in order to protect uh, Ukraine and speed up the victory. So we are uh, praying on a daily basis and we are working as hard as we can to speed up the victory, to make sure that these Ukrainian families can be reunited, children can see their fathers again. This is we, very important. It's, 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 it is so important. It's extraordinary what you're doing, Helena. I hope you can get together with your family again soon. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.